And now we have an update on a story we've been covering for months. The lawsuit against conspiracy theorist Alex Jones filed by parents of Sandy Hook victims. Now, some of the parents, they sued the InfoWars host for defamation because Jones repeatedly said that the school shootings were a hoax. He even said they were staged by the government as part of a conspiracy to confiscate guns. Now, a judge just yesterday denied Jones's motion to dismiss the case. Of course, as we all know, that horrible day, 20 children and six adults were senselessly murdered. It was a December day in 2012. And over the years, we have spoken to many parents who lost children on that fateful day. But it is not just the parents who suffered unimaginable loss. Siblings, they are also still dealing with this tragedy. Now, before the new developments in the lawsuit that we just described, our senior political producer, Karen McBride, she sat down with a brother of one of the victims for a union conversation. Karen? Thank you, Rich. It's been nearly six years since J.T. Lewis lost his younger brother, Jesse, a first grader at Sandy Hook Elementary. Now, J.T. himself was just a child then, but he found some peace talking with kids half a world away. He started an organization called Newtown Helps Rwanda and has raised thousands of dollars to send orphaned, identified survivors to college. Now he's joined the national conversation on gun violence in our schools. And I sat down with J.T. as he was preparing to head off to college. We spoke about school safety, Rwanda, and his memories of Jesse. So JT, this must be an exciting time for you. You're heading off to college for the first time. And it must be a bittersweet time as well. You of all people, having lost your younger brother, know the potential for school violence. Talk a little bit about your concerns for kids now and also for yourself. Actually, uh, in preparation to go to college, my mom actually bought me a bulletproof backpack, which was uh, a pretty strange feeling to have to feel the need to go to school with a bulletproof backpack because maybe they won't have enough security or, you know, they're, you just don't really know what threats you're going to be faced with. And, of course, we know personally that you, you, you won't expect, but you should be prepared for the situation. Since losing Jesse, you've become an advocate for school safety, but initially you had reached out to kids in Rwanda. Talk about your organization. Talk about the, the first few days after what happened and what led you to these, these kids who are thousands of miles away from your home. Yeah, it's, it's kind of all a blur. I have no idea. I mean, just an amazing uh, story. But basically, uh, a couple weeks after the shooting, I wasn't going back to school um, in a state of depression. I was 12 years old, I didn't really know what was going on. Uh, it was very surreal, but so through a family connection, uh, these kids from Rwanda, who are now mid-20s, they Skyped, Skyped out to me and basically said that, that I'd be happy again and that you know, you'd find, you'd persevere through it and uh, you'd find a reason to keep going. And at that point, I hadn't really talked to anyone who had had an experience like losing a family member in, in that kind of violence. So I kind of I connected with them in that way because they were with me and kind of people I could trust who knew. So after that, you know, I, I was able to go back to school. I started to raise money for them because I found that the, uh, the one thing they all had in common was that they wanted to continue their education and they couldn't because of the genocide. So I started Newtown Helps Rwanda uh, with a couple friends and we started selling wristbands uh, and raising money for their college educations. At this point, I think we're over 25,000, some, some number like that, but um, we, we really do it project by project. So it started with Betty. Um, we raised $8,000 and we were able to send her to college and support her family because she was supporting eight siblings at that time. Uh, and then we expanded into Uganda with former child soldiers building uh, fish ponds so that they could sustain themselves. And now you've become involved in school safety initiatives. And recently in May, you were with Education Secretary Betsy DeVos. You were in Washington. You were part of a meeting talking about violence in the schools. Tell us a little bit about what happened. Yeah, the, the meeting was unique because it was the first time after a school shooting that we didn't jump to gun control, um, whether that's because the administration didn't, doesn't want to look at gun control or because they don't think it is productive which I agree with because it's been 19 years of constant gun control and we still have school shootings. But they were actually looking at uh, solutions to making schools safe. 
So I got up there and I talked about um, I talked about armed guards. I talked about single entry points, the possibility of metal detectors. So it was a very productive meeting because we were actually finally talking about solutions to the problem, not just gun control, and then leaving it there because, of course, nothing's going to happen. It's America. It's it's kind of it's a dead end, and I think a lot of politicians know that. You're an advocate for armed guards in the schools, and I'm going to play a devil's advocate here. Um, because there are people, critics, who say that having armed guards in the schools would make the schools seem more like prisons and wouldn't even guarantee the safety of the students. How would you respond to that? Yeah, the biggest thing I hear is that having armed guards in schools and metal detectors and single entry points, it makes it feel like a prison. A prison is supposed to keep bad people in. The school, they want to keep bad people out. There's you know, a very big difference there. But on top of that, you know, after 9-11 in airports, before there was not much security. Afterwards, we just we beefed up security with a TSA. We started you know, metal detectors, armed guards, all these things that I think schools should be afforded, uh, things that all federal buildings have. All of our politicians go around with an armed detail. Why can't our kids be protected the same way we protect our politicians? That's my question. JT, in addition to all the pain and suffering that you and your family have gone through, there are people unbelievably out there who question whether Sandy Hook happened. They call it a hoax. Alex Jones is one of them. How would you respond to that? You were there that day. Well, we don't respond, but uh, you know, it's. I think most conspiracy theories, Alex Jones put aside, most of these people they just can't comprehend that this kind of thing could happen. Uh, and it kind of goes to our point of wanting to make schools safe. I mean, yeah, it's happening. Kids are getting killed in their classrooms. You know, you could go into a hole and say, no, it's not happening, la, la, la. Or you could actually get on the front lines and do something about it, make, make change. JT, what would you like us to know about Jesse? Uh, it's, it's quieter. He was very loud. So definitely a presence missing for six years. He's been, he was alive just as long as he's been dead. That day, he saved nine lives. That's a, a pretty prominent story that came out of that, a positive story. So the shooter came into the classroom and killed a few kids, and then his gun ran out of bullets or jammed. It's unclear exactly what happened. Uh, and in that interval, he yelled for his classmates to run and get out of the room. Nine of them did, as he's credited with saving nine lives that day. So that, I think that pretty much sums up his entire life pretty well. JT, talk about going off to college. What are you looking forward to? What are your plans? Sure, yeah. Um, one thing I'm looking forward to in college is continuing my uh, pushing for uh, safe schools. Uh, it's not going to stop just because I'm going to college. I have plenty of time in summers, and I'm going to join Turning Point USA, the uh, college organization started by Charlie Kirk. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and just continuing to talk to media and talk to politicians and keep, keep getting this stuff pushed. What I found is we're at the end of the summer now, and so it's this uh, talk about school safety has completely died down. You have to really push people to talk about it. It's unfortunate because it's only after a school shooting that we actually start to see positive things happen. Such an important thing to do because kids are not going to be able to learn productively if they're not feeling safe in school. I mean, look at me, I lost my brother in school and now I'm going to college and I had to buy a bulletproof backpack because the school is not safe enough. That's unfortunate. No, no one should have to go through that, so we're pushing to not not have that happen anymore. Karen, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, we will be right back after this quick commercial break. Please stay with us here at RFL.